Let me at the beginning make it abundantly plain and clear that I hold the leaders of the Iranian revolution with respect. I honor them. And I consider those who gave their lives, who died in the struggle to liberate Iran from the oppressive rule of the Shah to be people who have died in Allah's way. I pray for Allah's mercy upon them, blessings for them. Let me make it clear that the world of Islam have allowed the Shia to perform the Hajj for 1400 years. No, no regime in control of the Hijaz, no regime in the control of the Hijaz, to the best of my knowledge, in these 1400 years, have ever prevented the Shia from performing the Hajj on the grounds that they were not Muslims. It is therefore, I think, a little bit late in the day for some fatwa to be issued that the Shia are kuffar. So I recognize the Shia of Iran as Muslims. Having said that, my honor and respect for those who led the Iranian revolution and those who fought in the Iranian revolution, my admiration for them. And having spoken about my recognition of them as Muslims, let me now say that anyone who declares of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he is a usurper is misguided. This is not an uncharitable statement. This is not a declaration of any war. It's just a factual statement. And when you compound that by declaring that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a usurper, you're misguided. And when you compound that by declaring that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a usurper, you were thrice misguided. And so, because of this misguidance that I've just mentioned, this is enough, I don't need to go beyond this. The version of Islam which emerges from our Shia brothers cannot be considered to be completely authentic. And therefore, it can now be understood why this partially authentic version of Islam is the only version of Islam which can succeed in a revolution in the modern age. Nobody else. Nobody else. And when Saddam Hussein is toppled, it is more likely than not that the regime which will replace him would be Shia. Hmm? What this would do would be, lend, would be to lend credibility to the Shia claim to validity that this is the authentic Islam. Because this is the only Islam which is succeeding in the modern world. Israel wouldn't want to destroy that. <laughs> and so the Iranian oil is not likely to be touched. Wait, and we will see. Okay, I just answered this question. You spoke about the forces behind WW2 being the same forces manipulating the Iranian revolution. I just answered this. Why will Iran not be attacked? I just answered this. <coughs> if Islamic banks are taking back door riba, then what about Musharaka and Mudaraba? Musharaka is halal, it's called partnership. Mudaraba is halal, I have money, but I don't have business expertise and business acumen. You have a business, okay? So I invest my money in your business, but I'm not running the business. You're running it. If the business makes a profit, I get a share, but it'll be less than Musharaka. 
If the business suffers a loss, I share in the loss. This is Modaraba, and this is how a stock market, actually, stock market operates. But this must be a stock market which is free from riba. That stock market is actually the system of Modaraba at the level of a system. What kind of economic activities will there be in the village? Number one, the production of food. I think I spoke about this previously. And this will be the best food which will, which will fetch the highest price, because organically prepared, pr produced food. Whatever surplus production we have, because the village will only consume the food it produces. We ain't eating no supermarket food, not for Sydney. Okay? The village will consume only the food which it produces. And the reason for this is because of Suratul Kaf. The Suratul Kaf, where the young men woke up, were woken up after 300 years, and naturally you'll feel hungry after 300 years, and they sent one of their young men to buy some food, and they said, فَلْيَنْزُرَيُّهَا أَذْكَى تَعَامْ So go search for that food, which is purist indicating that food in the age of Dajjal is going to be corrupted. That's it today. So surplus production of food will be marketed. We get an income from that. Secondly, the village must have industry. In, 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 Malaysia, in, um, in Indonesia, for example, we want to concentrate on batik because the Indonesians have a natural talent for artistry, batik. Where industry needs energy, where are we going to get the energy from? Where are we going to get the energy from? Are we going to depend on the government for energy? Suratul Kaf answers and points to nature. Points to nature. Go to nature for energy. In Suratul Kaf, which one of nature is pointed out to? Solar energy. وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ shimal. How is this affected? They're being turned to the left and to the right. How? وَتَرَى الشَّمْسَ إِذَا طَلَعَتْ تَذَاوَرُوا عَنْكَهَ فِيهِمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ تَخْرِدُهُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ وَهُمْ فِي فَجْوَةٍ مِّنْ When the sunshine enters in the morning, the sunshine enters in the evening, but in the daytime sunshine does not enter. And the bodies are rolling to the left and the right. Obviously, this is attraction to sunlight. What is this called in science? Attraction to sunlight. Photo? Not photosynthesis. You've got to go back to your physics book. Phototropism. And now the sunshine is transformed into energy. What is this called? Photosynthesis. Hmm? And so Surah Tulkaf is pointing to nature as a source of energy. In this case, solar energy. So that you achieve energy independence. You have water independence. You have energy independence. We will want to have industries in the village. Because we do not want a village in which all our men folk in the morning, they go to work to Sydney. And in the evening, they're coming back home. This is not a Muslim village, it's a hotel. We want a Muslim village in which Salatul Jummah and the Masjid, Salatul Zuhr and the Masjid is full. Salatul Asr and the Masjid is full. Hmm? So for that we've got to provide means of livelihood, sustenance within the village. So the village will have its own economy. And there will be those present here tonight who will be able to do a better job than I can in working out that economy. Why is Tablik Dawa less effective than Islamic village Dawa? No, no, no. I don't know what is Tablik Dawa. I know what is Tablik, it is to reach out. I know what is Dawa, it's to call. I don't know what is Tablik Dawa. Good. I was talking about those who build a five star masjid. Oh, yes, five star. And calling the people to the masjid. And the masjid is full. But they don't know they've built the masjid on a ship that is sinking. 
And the ship is sinking and they don't know it. And when the ship sinks, they will sink with it. And they're calling people to Islam <laughs> while the ship is sinking. Real da'wah must emerge from a people who are a people who understand the world. Using Islam to understand the world. And using Islam to respond to the world. That is da'wah. And I gave you the example of how the Muslim village would impact upon the black masses. America and Britain are all capitalist states. Policies built upon interest. interests. Regarding Israel, it has always been a tool of the capitalist state. It derives its legitimacy and strength from these states. Israel and Jews are cowards. How can Israel take on the Muslims? Isn't it the US with its buildup of troops that is preparing to take on the Muslims? Uh, my answer is, wait and see. Wait and see. I have used the hadith to describe a reality in which one ruling state is about to give way to another. So my analysis comes out of the hadith. This analysis comes out of political political analysis using normal tools of political analysis. I think this would be a valid analysis for someone using normal tools of political analysis. But someone using the Quran and Sunnah would understand that this is not correct. In your booklet you've only talked about the Middle East, when will the situation in the Indian subcontinent, what about the situation in the Indian subcontinent, South Asia and Central Asia? This is not correct in my booklet. I said that the United States could not have been attacked on September the 11th unless you had first put in place a government in Islamabad. It's there in my book. They had to first put their man in Islamabad before they could attack the United States on September the 11th. And so all that drama in the sky about an aeroplane running out of fuel, that belonged to Hollywood. That belonged to Hollywood. Nawaz Sharif, the Prime Minister, was absolutely correct when he said that this was a conspiracy hatched against me. Hmm? So that I could be remove, removed from power and so that this government could be put in place. No elected government of Pakistan could ever, ever, ever have consented to the United States using the territory of Pakistan to attack Afghanistan. That is suicide. No government would have done that. Not even the worst government of Pakistan would ever have done that. So you had to have a Jewish government in Pakistan. A government established by the Jews to serve the Jews. Only then you could have had a government in Pakistan would allow the United States to use the territory of Pakistan to attack Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So don't say that I did not speak about this, the Iranian, I mean the subcontinent. What role will Iran play in the upcoming rising from Khorasan? This is tomorrow's lecture. No, yeah, tomorrow is Imam al Mahdi? Yep. Yeah, tomorrow. If the state of Israel will be dominant over the whole world, will it be without anyone's help? If the answer is yes, then what does it mean by Allah's word, illa bihablim min Allah? When the Jews boasted of what they did to Nabi Isa alayhi salam, okay? That was the last straw. Then Allah's curse came upon them. Wabau bi min min Allah. And even in Surah Al-Fatiha, غَيْرِ الْمَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ 
the Jews. Now their fate around the world is to live in misery, to live in poverty, illa bi habli min Allahi wa habli min nas The only exception to this, the only time the Jewish civilization can prosper after the attempt to crucify Isa al Islam is if they live under a non Muslim rule and that non Muslim rule extend to them guarantee of security. Or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to give it to them temporarily. Other than this, their state will now be maskana and zilla and ghadabi min Allah. What is the source of income in the Muslim village? Can we maintain our careers and jobs? Or do we have to return to subsistence farming? I don't think this is subsistence farming. If you're producing that food which will fetch the highest price. I mean, in South Africa, six million whites are going to be lining up to buy this food because they know they can trust Muslims. They can't trust anybody else. It's like blood. <laughs> when they want blood, the best blood you can get is Muslim blood. I mean, full-time Muslim, not part-time. <laughs> so the food which will be produced by the Muslim village will fetch the highest price. This is not subsistence farming. But I've mentioned that in addition to farming, food crops and dairy farming, we, the village must also have its own industry. We can have cottage industries like batik in Indonesia, cottage industries. I mean, there are some Muslims, not the Malay, but the Indian, the Indian Muslim, Pakistani Muslim. I mean, he's been, he's been given a special talent for computer, computer software engineering. He go down to Silicon Valley in, in, in San Francisco. You know how many Hindus, Indians are out there? The, the place looks like Little India. <laughs> huh? Silicon Valley looks like Little India. Because, of course, the Hindus are the ones who have taken the market. But it's also because of a special aptitude that Allah has given to a people. Wallahu ambatakum min al ardin nabata. Allah has caused you to emerge from the earth, earth like trees and plants. And some trees are for timber, some are for shade, some are ornamental. Hmm? So these are people who have been endowed the aptitude for this kind of work. Inna sa'ayakum la shatta, another ayah. So why can't we, from the Muslim village, why can't we have software engineering companies operating out of the village? Huh? How can we implement Islam in this country? How can we apply two systems in one country? In your Islamic village, will we have the power to set up political, economic, and judicial institutions? What will the Australian government have to say? This is Australia, but we already have a case study of Hamas, Hama in Syria in 1982. The answer is, so long as you do not threaten the state, and so long as you enforce the Quran and the Sunnah, you have one more actor in the equation now. And that actor is Fa'alul Lima Yurid. He has the power to do whatever he wants. That actor is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Al Kahf of the Quran, he has declared that if you disconnect, Young Shurlakum Rabbukum Mi Rahmati. He will shower you with his Rahmah. Hmm? If, however, the government, not necessarily Australia, the government comes after you even in a remote village. Even in a remote village. Where you do not threaten the state at all. This will provide you with a propaganda victory. 
How? The part-time Muslims in Sydney will now have to answer. You say this government is good. You say this system is good. You say there is no need for us to part from it. Now give us an answer. We never pose a threat to anyone at all. We are small, we are not big. We are far away. And yet they came against us. Is this not wickedness? So in the process of doing that, they will hand us a propaganda victory. If we are allowed to retreat, what we do? We go find another place. You know the experience of squatters? Squatting? You move them from one place, they go somewhere else. Squatting. Hmm? So this is a Muslim village. And if in a particular territory there is no space, nowhere, nowhere at all, where a Muslim can live, as a Muslim, Still, you don't allow, you're not allowed to, to throw in the towel and join them and become part of the melting pot. Why? Because when the angels are taking you into the hellfire, the angels are going to pause. Pause. Surah to Nisa. And the angels are going to ask, Fima Kuntum. What happened? How did you end up in this mess? That we're taking you into the hellfire. And then you're going to reply with, we had no alternative. There was no way to go. Kunna mustadafina fil art. Guess what the angels reply and say? Alam takun ardullahi wasi'ah fatuhajiru fiha. Was Allah's earth not wide that you could have packed your suitcase? And go search somewhere on Allah's earth where you could remain faithful to Allah. This is going to separate the men from the boys. Mm. Yes. When Muslims are shy in spearing even five dollars a week, what is the prospect for such missions to form a Muslim village? I said it. I anticipate those who are 17, 18, and 19, and 20, 21, and 32, who come to attend my lectures or who listen to the tape recording when I'm gone. I said, I think these are the ones, the young ones. Allah will put a fire in their hearts, and these young ones will build a village. But if the old people want to come along, they're welcome. <laughs> they're welcome. Hmm? However, to buy the initial land, you have to find capital. So you have to find those in whose hearts Allah has put a love for the deen and who are prepared to invest, not to give, to invest the capital. Because once the land is bought, and you got permission from municipal authorities for housing on part of the land. You can now sell house parts at a very moderate price and recover money which was invested. You're going to be selling farmlands in plots and recover money which was invested. So the money which was invested would be recovered. It's not charity. When the Muslim village is established, People who are poor can come now and live in this village. Because you don't need 500,000 Australian dollars to buy a house. What happened? Yours cost more than that? <laughs> so you don't have to borrow money through the front door or through the back door. Because in Indonesia, I told you, the Muslim village will have bamboo houses, beautiful bamboo houses. And when the Messenger of Allah returns, you know which one? Nabi Isa alayhi salam, and you offer him a choice, the bamboo house or the $500,000 house, guess which one he's going to choose? Brother, you are talking about a Muslim villa. 
a Muslim villa? <laughs> but in, Syri in Sydney, the majority of Muslims live in Lakemba and Auburn, and these are areas known which is a crime zone in Sydney. How can you overcome the situation? I like this question. You know why? Because in the Muslim village, you can sleep with your, with your windows open. Every single house I went to in South Africa had a big sign. Big sign, yellow, red, armed response. Every single house. They had, they had electrical wires, electrically wired. So if you touch that wire, you go on a holiday. <laughs> Inside the house, not outside, inside the house, you have to go through burglar alarms. Inside the house. And then the last one is where they're going to be sleeping. <laughs> this is what I saw in South Africa. So I said to them, in the Muslim village, you could sleep with your window open. Why? Because the village would have its own collective security. This is private property. No one can enter this city, this village, without our permission. Okay? And we have one entrance into the village. You're going to pass through that entrance. The village would have its patrols. So you're not going to sleep every night. No. Imam will have to spend one or two nights on patrol. Yeah. And so the collective security of the village, number one. Number two, the village does not have BMWs. It is when you have wealth and you display the wealth that people come after you. But when you live in a bamboo house, who's going to come after you? <laughs> hmm? And so you'll have much more security. You drink alcohol in our village, we're going to beat you. Yeah. You're a Muslim, and you drink alcohol in our village, we're going to beat you. <coughs> take all your shoes, take your shirt and wrap it up, and beat him, because it's going to be a public disgrace for him. Drugs, we're going to solve that problem in the village, inshallah. Now, I am not going to build a village. You have to build a village. What I've done is to put, to plant the idea in your mind. And I'm sure some of you are going to come up with better ideas than I can think of at the moment in respect of the religion. Does the Amir or the Muslim village have the knowledge to be a mujtahid? Is that a prerequisite? A mujtahid is one who engages in ijtihad. Hmm? When ijtihad takes place, whoever it is who, who performs the ijtihad, and now, even the President of the United States, even the President of the United States is engaged in Ishtihad, and the government of Australia and the government of Singapore, yeah, engage in Ishtihad because they're giving us new versions of Islam. <laughs> and they're telling us this is the right Islam. <laughs> it, is, it is when the Ishtihad takes place that you now have to examine that Ishtihad. And it must gain ijma, ijma of the learned, before that ijtihad can be accepted as part of our law. Last question. The talk was very good, but why say that there are no sects in the village? For when you mention the Sufis and the Salafis, what happened to the Muslims of, and the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah? In the Muslim village, we do not want anyone to identify himself as Sufi. We say, keep that in your private life. Insofar as the public life is concerned, you don't belong to any sect. Insofar as the public life of the Muslim village is concerned, you're only a Muslim. That's all. يا بيت القدس لنا أمل ستعود القدس لأمتنا 
ونطهر ساحتك العذراء وننشر فوق كرايتنا ننشر فوق كرايتنا القدس تنادينا القدس تنادينا One Islam Productions, an Islamic film studio established in Australia, is dedicated to producing films for all Muslims. Just some of the films by One Islam Productions. Children's programs, Islam for Me, We Remember Allah, Storytime and more. Educational films, Pray As You Have Seen Me Pray, Words, Ramadan, Renewal of Faith. Documentaries. We at One Islam Productions believe that Islam is precious and deserves to be presented in only the highest quality. Visit us at www.oneislam.net for more information. One Islam Productions, a film production company run by Muslims for Muslims.